Hello there and welcome to Heart Explained Therapy and I'd like to talk about what is love. Now it looks like it's a very important part of humanity. It looks like it's been in civilizations for hundreds of years. But I'm going to argue now, do we really know what love is? Now, if you think about music, if you think about films, they all have a sort of beautiful view on happy endings and love and, and even the sad songs and the uh, sad films are basically painful experiences where love has either appeared because of the pain or has appeared because somebody now has to love themselves because they're out of a relationship. So whichever type of this love we're looking at, self or other, we can see it's a very consistent, constant part of human existence. Very important to understand that it's human existence. Now, we're not sure if an animal loves in the same way that humans love. It's very difficult to say if it's a natural instinct that they raise their own or if it's because of this feeling that we're consciously aware of. So breaking down just human experience of love, we see that there's some sort of love that, ex that exists out there. There are two types of love, self and other, that's quite uh, clear to see. And then you can start to see that there's actually a spectrum of love. There's a love that you have for your partner that is different for parents. And there's a love that you have for your children that is different from siblings. And then there's a different love for friends, uh, colleagues. And so there's a vast spectrum of love now. Now we're getting into more information. So it's more dis difficult to sort of talk about and find an absolute truth of love. Uh, an absolute truth for me is an unarguable piece of evidence that is in a sense either proved by the science and the maths or the experience that we have or the thoughts and the feelings that we have or uh, in a way uh, bringing in pseudoscience it can't be proved because of a, a strange different sort of technology that we haven't got the ability to see. But when we get to this spectrum of love, we can quite clearly see that sometimes in relationships, you may not actually have love. Uh, because for two people to love each other, there has to be both people loving themselves. Now, you may think you love yourself, but unconsciously you may not be loving yourself and therefore you'll be in a relationship where you think the person you love the person and the person loves you and you'll see that there's a lot of sort of bad things that happen that wouldn't happen with this truer love this greater love this greater experience where you can forgive and forget and you can um, not view anybody else's emotions uh, as if they triggered your emotions and and it's a, a deeper sense of love. So when you get down to this level you realise that for a collective humanity to to be on the same level of a truer love you would all have to love yourselves and if that doesn't happen then the perfect sort of vast web of love that we're trying to achieve isn't going to happen. Now Lots of religions and belief systems and sort of tribes and uh, segregated groups have an answer for this, that we all get together, we all believe in the same thing and we tell everybody and expand this group and raise money and expand it even more and we make sure all our children get the education and are educated on this religion and this one religion being true and this one philosophy and meaning um, which is quite strange because if it's it's one thing that is almost constant throughout human humanity 
but you'll never actually give in any education on love. So it's very difficult to know something when you have no education for it. And in fact, it's not really spoke about as a subject. It's, uh, it's not a science or a maths. It's not a, a sort of educated subject. You can't get a degree in love. It's, um, it's impossible. So the one constant that seems to be apparent in humanity and civilizations is this thing that you can't really learn about. It's almost like it has to be instinctual and you have to do your own work to find out what it is. And what happens when you find out is it's a bit of an anticlimax because it's like a lot of love is actually not love at all. It's uh, based on fear. It's based on environmental reasons. It's based on a little bit of luck. It's based on certain attributes of the person doing something for you. It's more of a transaction than love. It's more of a, you meet this need and I'm going to uh, take advantage of that by showing you what seems to be the cloak of love. Um, and it's quite sad really that that's the case. And some people can actually treat somebody really bad, really toxically bad, attack them, assault them, um, and do something that is just absolute vile, which makes the other person then question everything they do and, and have this belief that they are never going to love themselves because this person doesn't love them. And what you actually realise is that there is a part of that person that loves them. To love someone and to hate somebody is the same thing. And this is proof when you've ever heard anybody talk about anybody like an ex-relationship and they say they hate them, they hate them, they can't even say their name, you know, it's like Lord Voldemort. And you realise it's because that is still there, it's still in that heart, it's still a raw emotion that they cannot bring up. So, um, this is pretty crucial to understand. We've broke down through a lot of garbage of love now that's not actually true and not actually real. And you could argue that um, there's a parent love that is more biased towards self-love than actually the bringing up of the children. I mean, lots of parents, to me, don't seem to show the same sort of love that grandparents show to the grandchildren. And it seems like if you skip a generation, you're able to show more love to that than your own children. Now think of that just for one minute. How can grandparents seem to have this stronger affection to their kids' kids? And it's almost like they're older, they're wiser, and they realised how unconscious they was. And possibly because they've got more time to do this now, and they was just in the moment surviving and uh, unconsciously trying to work a relationship whilst raising children and now they can actually do it at a weekend but they just seem to have that little separation of of that looks to be like greater love now again another great thing that we can throw on the spectrum but it's all working towards this one even bigger type of love and this is when you realize that love sort of transfers or sort of journeys past your normal group. It transpires to every body, every human, every animal, and even into every sort of feature of this beautiful planet. It's what we call or what is observed as um, and has been labelled by the human race as a sort of hippie sort of love. Hippies are stereotyped with long hair, jazzy, dyed, uh, the sort of dyed clothes and they just want peace. They're just in peace 
pure love for themselves, everybody's the same, white and black doesn't exist and it's just a beautiful love. Now this is a fact, this exists, it exists and is triggered on psychedelics. Um, now this is possibly the closest thing that we can have to say an absolute real tr truth of love, a true love that can be unargued. All the others have other factors involved, other factors from the egoic mind, other reasons for existing. This one, because it includes so much more, and it concludes, uh, includes that quite naturally, it includes that instantly, without any work from you. You don't have to, oh God, how am I going to love the whole world? How is everybody me? It's just this boom this collective power, this energy you've plugged into the system. Uh, a little bit like the film Avatar when you're uh, one with nature and you're sorry that you have to kill an animal. It's like it's pure sympathy, it's pure uh, psychedelic, it's the best word for it in a way, but you don't need a psychedelic to have this, it's just another experience that you can have with them. So this is an absolute truth of love. Nobody knows this exists, as in like 99% of the world doesn't know it exists. And people actually can, can change this feeling, which is more than a feeling, it's more, more of a state. It's not emotional anymore. Emotional is egoic. This seems higher, a higher state, a higher separation from the egoic mind seems to take place. It's spiritual sort of love. And some people attach the word God to this, that God must exist because of this feeling. And it can be called consciousness as well. This has been the power, the energy, the source. Now, if you look at humanity, we, it seems quite clear that we have some other absolute truths. We seem to need purpose. It's it's very difficult for a man or a woman not to have any meaning in the world. And even when you see somebody who seems to not have a purpose, the lazy universal credit guys who sit on their arse all day, you can say that they're actually pinned down by all their egoic fears. So they would have a purpose and they did have a purpose and their purpose now is to stay away from anything that scares them. So, and we're trying to break down this absolute love and where does it come, come from, why is it there? And you see, fear is there for us to survive and our egoic mind triggers senses in our emotions to make us survive and love would give us a beautiful reason to survive. A reason that can be connected with the biggest cosmos consciousness, the, co the cosmos mind, um, as if it was ours and everybody else is ours and we're not alone anymore, but we can be alone because we are alone, but we're understanding that we're alone with everybody else and it's all this beautiful love and it is fantastic. And the big argument is, does that process mean anything? Like, is it there for us to have purpose, to love and uh, pass this God consciousness throughout everybody and tell everybody about it and spread the word? Or is the world just doing exactly what it should be doing? It's there for people who want to find it and if you haven't found it in this life you'll, you'll get another chance and then this is where uh, sort of karma can come into it and these afterlives and reincarnated lives and all these fables and stories come into a beautiful idea. Now my own personal philosophy is it seems to me that if you let go of your mind and everything that attaches to that mind, 
what consciousness seems to do is fill you with DMT. It basically fills you with euphoria, as if you was sort of producing a different chemi chemical than you've ever produced in, in your life. And you probably have in small amounts, but this seems to be a huge sort of serotonin and dopamine hit and a half that just boom, plugs you into the planet. Now, to be honest, it doesn't really matter anymore whether this is process or God. And this is a beautiful thing, and this is what I think that God, the believers of God, can't understand. If this is a process that happens, an evolutionary process just for survival, then you can call it God. You see, human mind, the human mind has the idea of God, and the human mind has the idea of a process taking place. Now, then are two words, words of language that we created, a sound that we make, and you need audio equipment to hear that sound being made. So the truth is, as uh, Alan Watts would say, the, tr the only truth is, is dum, and he used to hit a bong. <laughs> um, but still, that's a noise that you have to pick up with your, with your ear. And we can stretch this back as much as you can, and as far as you can, and we get into unanswerable, arguable sort of definitions. And you see that there's literally, I think now I've wrote down 20 different possible outcomes that have some truth and rationale in them. They can be argued slightly, but I've got it down to 20, and I'm still searching for different answers because I just thought it would be nice to find out the truth and I enjoy expanding my mind but the great thing about this process see God people don't like it not being God it's something special about God it's like God is afterlife it's forever it's eternity the process isn't the process is we just die doesn't matter you can attach God to that you can go out and save thousands of people with that God you're merely covering up your pain the same way that I cover my pain up by saying it's a process um, there's a reason there's a technical reason we we believe different stuff I get the feeling of love but I don't think it's consciousness I don't think it's God it seems to me more as a direct result of stepping out of the egoic mind. Now, for some reason, the egoic mind does the same thing as a spirit. It makes you believe that there's an illusion that exists in reality, when quite clearly, and scientists are coming to prove this, and mathematics are getting together to prove this, there isn't any such thing as colour. There isn't any, you know, even the objects of matter that we say are real, are real in the experience of our minds. And we know that we can step out of that mind and go to a different realm. So, you know, we're getting into a whole new century of logic. But real love, true love, is this love and one of the parts of the process is loving yourself. And then you see the ugly side of the world and you feel like no one else loves themselves. And you feel like it's a waste of time. But then there's this other thing that comes. And when you feel it and when you have it, it's amazing. And you actually want to keep it forever. And at the moment, it doesn't sound like anybody's managed to master this. But you can certainly master a positive outlook on whatever reality you have or whatever reality you exist in remembering that reality doesn't really exist and I've got a feeling that in some sort of crazy new 
dimension that we haven't really stumbled across yet, consciousness doesn't exist either. Maybe I'll leave that for another video.